Hi. Norns from Mono is a small sound computer that can run different apps, or scripts as they're called here, designed to respond to MIDI or process incoming audio and in many cases generate something completely new on its own. It can be a generative sequencer, in this case based on buoys floating over waves of light. A super saw synth with a very original way to visualize delay and feedback. While we're at it, a sequencer inspired by plants. A multi-track granular synth. And that's just to name a few of the scripts that were written for Norns. In this video, I'll take a look at this interesting musical community and ecosystem, highlight a few interesting scripts, and wrap up with some alternatives and pros and cons you might want to be aware of before diving in. Before we start, a quick disclosure. Everything by Monome here was bought at a small discount. And as usual, they have no say over the content of this video, which is made possible by people who subscribe to my book updates and content on Patreon, YouTube Premium and Ads, and affiliate links in the description which help the channel regardless of what you choose to buy. Okay, before we take a look at how and what Norns does along with its controllers and other controllers, there are currently three versions of it. All three run the same exact scripts or apps. The first and most expensive option is the stock Norns sold by Monome for $800. It's a fully built instrument with a premium aluminum enclosure, built-in rechargeable battery, quarter inch stereo outputs and inputs, and additional headphone outputs and a white screen. The second option is the easy to assemble version called Norns Shield, also sold by Monome for $280. It's very easy to put together in less than half an hour, comes with a white enclosure, yellow screen, and acrylic top, and doesn't require any soldering. But you will need to buy a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, an SD card, two amp or higher USB power supply, and micro USB cable separately. So that's an additional cost. And when you put it together, be sure not to over tighten the screws because you'll crack the acrylic screen like I did. The easy to assemble version from Monome has a yellow screen as opposed to the third option, which is the DIY option, which you can get either with a white screen or a yellow screen. I have the DIY version here in the Monome enclosure or you can get a third party enclosure for it. The DIY version is one where you source the parts for the shield for this part from scratch, the PCB, the screen, the knob, encoders, everything here, and you solder it yourself with surface mount soldering. This DIY one was built for me by a friend, and the cost of the parts, including the screen and enclosure, do come out to be about, I'd say, 30% cheaper than buying the shield from Monome, not factoring, of course, the time it takes for you or friend to solder it. Another important difference is that when you buy the shield from Monome, you do support the cause, and when you built it yourself, you don't, so consider buying from them unless you really want to solder one yourself. In terms of connectivity, unlike the stock Norns, the Shield versions have 3.5mm inputs and outputs, stereo ones, and in addition to the four USB ports, which the stock Monome also has, it also has an Ethernet port, but most likely you'll use Wi-Fi, which all three versions have. Further, in terms of connectivity, while all three versions have four USB ports, they don't have MIDI inputs or outputs, not 5-pin, DIN, nor TRS style. They can still send and receive MIDI over USB. So for example, here the MC-101 or the VCMC all talk to Norns using MIDI over USB. But if you need 5-pin MIDI DIN ports, you'll need to get a USB MIDI interface in addition to this. Also, if you plan to use a lot of USB devices, even though Norns has four USB jacks, it doesn't have endless power to give. Devices draw power, and as you connect more of them, audio may get crackly, and some CPU-intensive scripts just won't run, so don't attempt to power up a setup like this just with Norns alone. Rather, get a powered USB hub and connect whatever you can to that. 
Norns also supports Ableton Link for wireless tempo sync, and it also supports touch OSC controllers, meaning that you can map parameters using their name as reflected in the mapping menu, and then control them with a phone, an iPad, or anything else that supports the OSC protocol. And you can also MIDI map any global parameters or parameters that are available in the individual apps using the mapping menu. So for example, if I wanted to map, uh, let's say levels here, output levels, just hit this, MIDI learn, and touch a fader, and I now control this with MIDI, but this also supports OSC, so I could control levels with this, but also with this. Another important connectivity feature, Norns also acts as a server on your network if you wanna transfer files back and forth, like samples or recordings, so no need to take the SD card out to do that. Norns doesn't have any CV inputs or outputs for Eurorack gear. Monome sells a companion Eurorack module called Crow that this connects to, or you could use a third-party MIDI to CV module to send CV out, or CV to MIDI module to send CV in. In terms of workflow, regardless of which of the three Norns you get, the user interface is identical. They all run the same apps or scripts. The basic interaction with the operating system here and the script is using the three onboard buttons called K1, 2, and 3, and three encoders, E1, E2, and E3. You can't always tell what they do by looking at them, but hopefully the app you're using gives you an indication of what, for example, E1, E2, and E3 do over here. The only button that has a fixed function is K1. This button, tapping it, will get you out of the script and back into the main menu, which has four tabs, the mixer, tape, system menu, and parameters menu. So a short tap toggles between the two. This means that this button can be used as a shift when you hold it within an app. Typically, these buttons will be back and will let you dive in, so backwards and forwards. And then when you're changing parameters, then this will choose a parameter from a list, and then this will typically let you adjust its value. But again, within the scripts, they can do anything. Like I mentioned, the operating system has four main tabs, levels where you can change the monitor out, incoming levels for incoming audio, and then monitor incoming input. And then there are three engines, so to speak, the synth engine, soft cut, which is the sampler, and tape. Tape is a really nice global feature available in all the apps, and that's on tab number two. This lets you either record or resample any audio coming out of any script, or play any wave file in the background as your script runs. If you hit play, you can choose any of the files on the system. We know where this is going. And that, or something calmer can loop in the background as your app runs. The third tab lets you handle some system parameters uh, like Wi-Fi and so forth, and then choose the script that you want to run. These little stars means that I favorited a script, and these are all the scripts that are installed here. Quite a few, a lot of space for scripts, and they don't take up that much space. Then the last tab lets you edit both global parameters. These are first, so levels. There's a built-in reverb, a compressor, soft cut is the sampler, and then clock, is, clock sync. And then the other parameters under that are related to the specific script that's installed and running currently. This is where you also MIDI learn or map external controllers to parameters, and you can also save these mappings as presets. Norns comes with several scripts on board, but at some point you'll want to update them or load up your own or maybe even write your own scripts, and that's where Maiden comes in. If you point your browser to norns.local or the IP address of your norns, this screen comes up. It's the scripting screen and might be intimidating, but if you head right out to here, you'll see both installed and available apps. You can update apps individually, remove them, update them all, see other available apps for download if they're not installed. Now this list contains two almost hidden links. The first, if you press the app name, you will often get a link to the discussion about it in the lines forum. This has both notes from the author as well as additional discussion, comments, questions, and so on about the script. And then back to Maiden, a second link that's almost hidden is this little booklet here, which points to norns.community. 
a website with a description and documentation for not all, but many of the available scripts. Both norns.community and Maiden will tell you if you need grid or arc for the script, as you can see here, uh, grid and arc, and you'll notice most of the scripts don't, um, don't require this additional hardware, which is nice. For some, it's optional. But yeah, quite a few scripts, both on norns.community and on Maiden. By the way, while Maiden is the built-in app store, even though all the scripts are free, it only lists those scripts that are submitted by their offers. So you might get a link to a, an app that doesn't exist on Maiden or on norns.community, say on GitHub, and you can install that with a simple command into REPL here. To complete the behind the scenes picture, Norns contains both a scripting language called Lua, and it also includes the Super Collider synth engine. I'll give you a taste of scripting a bit later, but there's no need for coding if you just want to use the scripts, and there are plenty of them. Norns also has a built-in six-voice sampler called Softcut that can access two five-minute mono recording buffers. So that's Norns as a standalone unit. There are plenty of scripts that don't need anything else, some of which I'll look into in a bit, but let's take a look at what we can pair it with. Probably the most immediate option is the grid or some other device acting as a grid that's compatible with Norns. The official mono grid in its current iteration has a 16 by eight pad grid. Other sizes were available in the past. The pads aren't velocity or pressure sensitive. They're all white, but can light up in different intensities. The grid doesn't do anything on its own, rather it's a freeform canvas that a script can choose to do whatever they want with, whether it's play samples or anything else. So let's take a look at a simple example and then let things get a bit more complex. I'll start with Awake, which is sort of like the Hello World app of Mono, and we can also control this with MIDI Clock. Awake is an example of a script that doesn't require grid, but is much faster to use with it. It's a simple script that uses two different length sequences. The first is a sequence of notes and the second sequence transposes the first sequence. Now you can edit this sequence on Norns itself. This is the note sequence and go down to edit the transposing sequence. But uh, yeah, it's obviously much easier to do it on the grid. Now for some scripts, you must have a grid connected. Let's go for say 33, which is a pocket operator 33 emulator. Let's load this up. So if we bring up an image of a PO33, this is basically one instance of a PO33. So it doesn't say what the buttons do, obviously, but I could choose to say record into this kit and then choose and edit the individual samples. So say choose a start and end point and you can also zoom in by the way, like this. Here we go. So I could continue to edit or chop samples if I wanted. Let's maybe do just one more. Go for here. And we could also use the built-in sequencer. And this is tempo synced. Let's maybe do one more. Sequence this. Cool. And the crazy thing about this, if we go into the parameters, remember global parameters are first, and then app specific parameters are here, we can add up to four of these. So three fit on this grid with the PO33 orientation, but if I change the layout, then we can actually get four pocket operators that will run in parallel. Now I would actually need to sequence something on these to hear them, but you get the idea. Kudos to Infinite Digits for making this a prolific developer of other interesting scripts as well. Now obviously you need to reference the manual to get an idea of what does what here. Let me show you just one more grid-based app, which, um, which I think is uh, 
you know, obviously a classic here, MLR, which is a six track blooper slash sampler. Now this has not one, but three different pages that you use to control it. Again, looks confusing initially, but you sort of get it once you play with it. There are six different tracks or six different loops. You can edit additional parameters for the different loops by selecting the loop and then editing the parameter here. This is play and this is record. It's a looper sampler. You can see the loop traveling over here and then we just recorded a single loop, which is running here. We can dance around the loop if we want. Change of speed. Or direction. Record uh, another loop. And uh, yeah, pretty nice. One's going in reverse, one's going forward. Then this uh, page lets you choose different clips for each of the um, six loops, so I can reuse a clip. Let's say for track three, I think I'm using it right. Yeah, so that's playing as well. And uh, yeah, one more nice feature is you can limit a loop to move only in a certain part of the sample. And uh, you can also automate key presses. So if I hit here, it records a series of key presses and then plays them back. Let's do that again. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. And you can stop those if you want. So that's MLR in a nutshell. So that's it for Grid. Another interesting alternative is a Launchpad. In this case, the Launchpad Mark III Mini, a relatively inexpensive controller. To pair these two up, you need to install a script called MidiGrid, fairly straightforward and easy, and then change, in most cases, one line of code in the scripts that you want this to work with, except for a few scripts that it already works out of the box. I tried it with the Awake script, added that one line of code, and yeah, it works really nicely and seamlessly. So this is the first pattern or sequence. Then change screens, go into the transposing pattern. Yeah, it just works. I'm told you can pair two of these. I don't have two, but uh, that's obviously something that can emulate a 16 by eight grid if you want. The next monome controller is Arc. Let's load up Mangle for this one. Arc is four silver endless encoders surrounded by a ring of LEDs. Arc isn't available anymore, it's discontinued. It was expensive as is. I bought this for $800, meaning $200 per encoder. And according to Monome, current component costs meant that the price needed to go up even more. So for now, it's no longer available. Even if it was available for sale, not many apps use it. So it's a purchase that's very hard to justify rationally. So for example, in Mangle, it lets you control the speed and pitch and other parameters for different loops that you load up into it. Another interesting uh, one is Lark. So Lark is yet another looper, which um, lets you do a few things with the um, arc. It's not a must, by the way, I think, for this app. So say, for example, to control amplitude of different playheads running across the screen. speed there are a few speed options here and uh, yeah panning and the last option 
option here is cut off. So Arc and Grid are nice, but the vast majority of scripts don't require them. And there are plenty of uses for Norns beside just uh, looping. You can use it as a module for samples with MX samples. So I'll turn levels all the way down here. I'm now playing this with the MC-101 just over MIDI. So there are a bunch of instruments that uh, you can download here. And these are all multi-sampled, high-quality instruments. Then there are also very interesting synths here. Passers-by, a super interesting West Coast-style synth. With uh, yeah, multiple wave-mangling options, uh, envelope, reverb, LFOs, including a nice randomization feature. which you never know what you're going to get, but it might be nice. So really nice synths here as well. Okay, so those were just a few of the many, many excellent scripts available here. Let's take a bit of a look under the hood. Now, a tutorial about how to make your own script is way beyond the scope of this video. As a matter of fact, I've not even learned Lua or Super Collider. I did have a brief look at the uh, studies and tutorials here for scripting. They're super friendly if you wanna go through them. However, if you don't mind breaking things and have minimal programming knowledge, since the code of all the scripts is open to you, it's actually not that hard to tweak existing scripts to get them to do what you want, within reason, of course. So we saw this earlier, Awake is a fun script. However, it did have a limitation that I wanted to tinker with, and that is that both the top script and the bottom scripts run at the same speed. I wanted the bottom transposing script to run a little slower. Now the actual code for Awake isn't that long, especially if you take out maybe the comments and lines that say end. And as I was scanning through it, I encountered these two lines, which seem to increment both sequencer one and sequencer two. So with a bit of tinkering and code that I absolutely don't take responsibility for, I added a counter variable and then gave it a clock division constant so that I don't get yelled at too much by the developers in the audience. And then basically said, okay, sequencer one, you can do your thing at your own rate, but let's count a bit before sequencer two moves forward. And basically that's it. And if we hit play on this sequence, you'll see that sequence two moves at a much slower rate. Divided by eight actually compared to sequencer one. So while I don't think I can make my own script from scratch just yet, editing scripts is much less intimidating. Just make sure to duplicate the script so you don't ruin the original one. All right, before I head out to the pros and cons, as I shared that I was making this video, I got asked how this compares to a few alternatives. The first batch is pedals or modules like Zoya, Hector and Bebo or Mod Duo and Dwarf. All three are way easier to create your own patches on compared to Norns, but are much more limited in terms of what you can do with them. Obviously there's some overlap, but nothing like Norns where you can take control of the screen, create your own interfaces, and most importantly, manipulate sound with code as opposed to just connecting modules to each other. There's only so far you can go with CV style patching as opposed to actual code. Another interesting alternative is the organelle. Unlike Norns, organelle's hardware isn't open source, but its software is, which also led to a thriving community of people making interesting patches with it. And since Organelle's apps are based on an open source platform, indeed through the efforts of the community, you can actually play many Organelle patches on Norns. But since the controls are different, to get a full experience, you'll need to map an external controller to replicate Organelle's controls if I had to broadly define the difference, I'd say patches on organelle lean more towards instruments you play or sequence using the keys, whereas scripts in Norns are more generative, but there are plenty of examples of both types on both. 
Having said that, if you want to create your own patches, Organelle mainly runs the node-based pure data as opposed to the code-based Lua. Both run Super Collider. Norns has a bigger and clearer screen, but Organelle has more hands-on controls. Norns is cheaper in the Shield version, not to mention if you go full DIY compared to Organelle. It's a tough call. Both have very interesting and capable apps and communities, so it's really a matter of personal choice. You can't go wrong either way, in my opinion. So that aside, let's talk about pros and cons for Norns overall. Usually I separate these to hardware and software, but before I get to that, a huge pro for Norns is neither the hardware nor the software, and that's the community building stuff for it. Technically, while Norns is a musically oriented development environment, it's basically a screen, a few buttons, and an encoder is attached to a Raspberry Pi, if it was just that in the development environment, I think Norns would be irrelevant for 99% of musicians who realistically aren't going to invest the effort needed to learn Lua and Super Collider. What makes Norns interesting, in my opinion, is that Monome was able to build a platform that attracts developers who are also into music to invest the significant amount of time it takes to pull off some of the amazing scripts I showed you and many others that I didn't. Now, there are amazing communities around other products like Zoya and Organelle, but I dare say that the Norns community gives them a run for their money, or should I say a run for their time, because all the scripts are free and open. My guess is that it's because the platform is truly open source, both hardware and software. So yes, you can buy these products from Monome, and yes, they're expensive if you do, except for the Shield, but if you want, you can source the parts yourself, build it yourself from scratch. And Mono, as a company, doesn't make a dime off that. And I think the spirit of sharing on behalf of Mono is what makes others want to contribute back with their time. Now, since anything any developer shares is by definition open source, other developers can take that code and build on top of it, often things way more useful in the clock divider than I did. Now, getting the romantic part out of the way, let's take a look at hardware pros and cons. On the pros side, you've got an instrument that doesn't cost much if you get the shield or build one yourself, takes up a very small piece of desktop real estate and does quite a lot. It's a sampler, a looper, a sequencer, effects box, synth, and a bunch of other eclectic things. It doesn't have a lot of onboard controls, but you can easily expand it with your own MIDI controller and pairs nicely and in a meaningful way with Monom's grid, obviously Arc, and also a launch pad if you want, which is fairly inexpensive. My top three cons on the hardware side, number one, Norns doesn't have a 5-pin or even TRS MIDI port, so you'll need a USB MIDI interface if your controller or synth don't support USB. Luckily, most do. Just be prepared to get a powered USB hub if your controller or synth are also powered by USB as these are. So yes, it's super expandable over USB, but it starts to get busy with a hub and USB MIDI interface. Then my number two hardware con is that the encoders aren't click encoders. Quite a few of the functions here involve moving between tabs or selecting menu items, and the encoders are smooth as opposed to the clicky kind, and I sometimes find myself moving two steps or not moving at all depending on the motion involved. Hopefully at some point there will be an option to swap these out for the clicky kind with operating system level support that customizes how they work. And then the third general limitation you need to be aware of is that since every script is free to do whatever they want with the buttons, encoder, screen, grid, or arc, there's a learning curve associated with each app. Most apps have a help screen when you load them up and very good documentation either on the Lions forum or norns.community site, but more often than not, don't expect to just load up apps and intuitively know how to use them. You'll need to spend a bit of back and forth with the documentation or a lot in case of an app like Arcology's, as opposed to devices with more screen real estate like an iPad or iPhone where manuals are unnecessary for the most part. Then on the software or firmware side, Overall, I've found this to be extremely stable, except when you draw too much power, so remember to use a hub. Obviously, apps might have bugs, but that's really up to the developer. My three top cons on the firmware side or operating system side are, number one, you can only run one script at a time. Sure, if you're good with code, you can merge two scripts or more, but there's no way to easily run, say, sequencer A with sampler B or synth B. The one welcome exception is the built-in tape feature. So like I mentioned earlier, you can record anything coming out of any of the apps, save that as a WAV file, and then either play that in the background while another app is running or load that as a WAV file into a looper or sampler if that looper or sampler supports it. Second, on my firmware wishlist side is more options to save entire script states and MIDI mappings. Currently it supports saving global parameters, anything that's mapped in the parameters page, whether global parameters or 
parameters exposed by the app developer, but these are saved as one. You can't save global parameters separately and app mappings or parameters separately. And you can't save an entire app state. So if you reached you know, some sort of generative pattern and you've looped a few things, if the app doesn't support saving that, then you can't get back to it. And then number three on my firmware wish list is that somehow MIDI routing and mapping was a little bit easier. Right now it takes a bit of figuring out. There's devices and they stay in a device list even if they're disconnected. Now I understand a recent version of the operating system has improved this by letting developers use device MIDI names instead of just device numbers. So maybe it's just a matter of developers updating their apps. I just found myself tinkering with this a little bit too much going back and forth between the app and the menus. Hopefully there's a way to make this a little bit more seamless as far as MIDI is concerned. One more tiny wish list item right now, there's no way to know if you're in the app screen or in one of the general menus. You do see these tabs when you move back and forth. I think it would be nice if, the, if these tab markers stayed consistent as opposed to disappeared. Uh, you know, over time when you use it, you obviously get used to it, but as you're diving into a menu, it's not always clear if you're in the app or in the overall menu system. Beyond the pros and cons, I got a question of whether I thought Norns was worth it without Grid and Arc, and the answer is, I think yes. There are plenty of apps, like I mentioned earlier, that don't use either one or use them as optional accessories. So yes, some key apps use the Grid, but as we move forward, I think you'll see more apps that are either gridless or support alternative, less expensive grids like the Launchpad. So that's it for Norns. If you found the insights in this video useful, there's a very good chance you'll enjoy my ever-expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks available to the good people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like to mark this video as viewed for future reference. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.